I have another video for you today. It is mixing grays for an oil painting, for an underpainting. I'm going to watch the video at the same time talking to you so that I can do the voiceover for it. Okay. So, let's get started. I mix gray so often that I decided to buy a quart of paint, um, the Titan White, Titanium White. Um, uh, this is from Gamblin's Handmade Oil Colors. They're based in Portland. I went on the website to like grab the link for you to put it in the description box, and I ended up, I ended up um, buying one of their merchandise t-shirts, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm opening up the can. They come with these little metal clasps on them. I didn't have a screwdriver, so I just found like a woodworking tool to pry them off. Um, so when I opened it up though, like I was really confused because what I was expecting the paint to look like, it, it didn't look like that at all. It's drastically different than what I was expecting. But I found a paint mixing stick to see if I could mix the dried paint and reintroduce the oil back into the pig, um, back into the paint and then I found out it's like a piece of paper or plastic or something so I'm just I pulled it off and I'm gonna save it for later um, so I, then I got a palette knife and um, just mixed a little bit on, mixed a little bit on the top there to get that oil back in and then I put some on my palette like if you're not using a tin which is probably not the case you can just squeeze them out however it's important to be mindful of how much you squeeze because I'll, I'll talk about this later, but if you squeeze out too much, um, it's going to be too hard to manage with the palette knife. Um, it's going to you're going to use too much black to make your steps, and then you're going to have too much left over because you give up trying to mix all that and save all the black. So you'll just have too much. You'll waste it, and then you probably won't use all of it. And it might dry out before you even get to use all of it. Um, so and then if you get too little of the white. Um, You'll have to replace the white more often and then you have to perform a lot of guesswork like to reshade your white paint back to the step that you were at before you ran out i'll go back over that later because i know that sounds confusing right now um but reshading uh, means adding black to a color and tinting like versus tinting which is adding white to a color so shading which is what you're doing you're shading the white you're always going to mix black into white and I'll say that again later. So I would recommend using gloves though, um, just cause it gets messy. I already have it like on my fingers and stuff. And I got my gloves, I got a big pack of them from Home Depot, but you can also find like smaller packs of them um, from the dollar store, the dollar tree for like a buck. Putting up the black, listen. Don't put your black so close to your white because it makes it really hard to like mix the white. Like it just your pile of black like gets in the way of your white. I'm conditioning the white here. I don't know if this is something that you're supposed to do or not. It makes you feel better. But I did find a little bit of like dry paint in it when I was doing that. So pull off um, a dab of black. There's no formula here. Um, the more you practice, the more you'll understand the tinting strength of your paint. It's all different. Gamlin has a specific tinting strength which is why I use it continuously I don't if you use like the Utrecht one it has more filler less pigment but it's like you have to re um, consider that every time you're doing that so if you just use the same kind over time you will really start to get used to like how many how much of a dab you use like each time you add it to the white it's also dependent upon the amount of paint that you use so I wouldn't put this much black with like a tiny thing of white like because it would like overpower it. So you just have to understand that too. So I've done this enough to know that that's okay to use that much black on my first step. And again, you always wanna mix the black into white. And if you do it the other way, if you mix white into black, you're gonna mix like your entire quart of white paint away in like one time. Um, also the mixing time, you don't want streaks. That's key to know that. Like you won't want streaks. Um, keep mixing until there aren't any um, you can spend hours mixing. I don't have that kind of patience, so, um, also the amount of black that you mix each time is going to determine how gradual your gray skill is. What I did when I first learned this, I used gouache and we had to just like add a little bit of black to white and make 
just gradual steps. Um, and then from there, you pulled out like your nine most gradual, best, like most distinctive color scale. Um, another way to do that would be to use a gray scale finder instead of using gouache. I like to, I like that I did the gouache because it's good practice. You only have to have essentially eight steps because white and black are your first two and they're just pure pigment. When I first started doing this with the oil paint, I was mixing like 16 or more steps and that's just too many. Like you can mix your grays, like you can mix the grays on the actual painting that you're doing and it like will automatically just create that one that's in between and you don't have to do it yourself. It's just way too much work. You're going to come up with your own technique for actually mixing the paints together, the pigments together. Um, I go forwards and backwards dragging the paint um, to the top and then make pushing it down, like mushing it down. But like pulling from the sides too, there's like a slow motion in here at some point where I show like basically the same thing but like perpendicular and then when you feel like your combination is sufficiently mixed pull a bit of paint and place it on a separate piece of palette paper or on a separate palette or like I'm doing I'm just putting it on the top because my palette is big enough it's a 12 by 16 palette box so I don't need to use separate paper I used to do that because it was just such a mess when you're mixing it but you get used to it you get better at it you can use the same piece of paper. You want to be mindful of pulling too much or too little. So this is another situation like that. You don't want to pull so much because you'll run out of the white. And <laughs> we already talked about that, but like you'll have to redo all, all that mixing that you already did, all those steps that you already did to get back to the same shade that you were at before you ran out of white. Or if you pull too little, you'll have too much paint left over and you'll use too much black. You'll run out of paint really quickly when you're actually working with this on a painting and then you'll have to just mix it all over again. You're just going to repeat that, all those steps and you can see um, I actually ran out of black paint which is a lot better than running out of white paint but yeah that's it. So I guess in conclusion always mix white or sorry always mix black into white. Don't use too much or too little of anything. But again, like you only know if you use too much or too little just by practicing. So I do really recommend using one of these. Um, I should probably start using one of these myself. But anyway, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions about where I got my palette box, it's from Blick. There you go, there's the answer. Palette paper is from Blick also. Palette knife is from Blick. The paint, I think. Pretty sure the white is from Blick, the black is from Binders, but they still have it at Blick. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So enjoy. I hope this helps. And if you do make a gray grisaille, which is basically, <clears throat> I think it means like grayscale in French or something, if you make one, I'd love to see it. But I'm gonna actually end up painting over it with color. This is just the underpainting. And why it's important, I think, to do the underpainting is um, is because if you think about light and oil paint, oil paint is transparent, so light goes through it, and it will reflect off the white of the canvas. However, if you add this gray scale, the light reflects off the grays, and then it reflects back with more depth of your colors, and you don't have to use as many colors. You don't have to like mixed shades and tints of your colors you can just use the scumbling and glazing of one color over the gray and it's a lot easier to do that so recommend that it's good it helps a lot um i'm actually working on my apron right now i'll put that in right here this is a painting in the grisaille that i'm working on right now um, basically, it's just an underpainting that is grays, and then you can add color on top of it later. It's hard to see. But speaking of steps, I went through and put numbers on all these little sections for my geometric paintings, because that's what I do a lot um, to make form and to make it a lot easier so I don't have to make as many decisions. This is what I started with. Traced it to get the forms, simplified forms, I guess. And then I had to figure out what the value is. So that's what that is, and that's what this is in progress. And then I'll just show you my palette 
I probably mixed this like three or four times, maybe four times since starting this painting. But those are my steps that you'll see. So that's all. Bye.